about a year ago, I was very stressed out. I'm still stressed out now, but for different reasons. Uh, and and this, this is probably a subject that a lot of you could relate to. Uh, I was applying for medical school here. I had taken the MCAT, etc., and I had been doing research here at the university for a couple of years in neuroscience. And now it's time to uh, sit down and write your essay and request recommendation letters from everyone. And then at the, at the end of the day, you sit there and you say, okay, uh, I'm about to evaluate myself. I'm about to put myself on paper, which is not a very pleasurable activity because a lot of you had to, had, had, had to write essays about yourselves and it's really difficult and it sounds cheesy, but how do you do it, right? And I, uh, I couldn't help, you know, there's many different essays. Med school essay applications are not just one essay. There's the major essay, but then there's many little questions in the different applications. So you're going to have to write probably five or six different themed essays. With every single one that I had to write, you really have to sit down and think deeply about what you have to write about. And almost at every single time I had to, something came up about my international experiences, about having grown up in the Middle East, about speaking Arabic, about learning French, about wanting to work in the Middle East, or wanting to use my languages, etc., etc. Uh, so as you could imagine, my essay was not one about uh, just I want to become a doctor to help people, etc., etc. I, I had more um, focal points where, uh, or, or I guess I'm trying to say, I had more specific points where I could say, look, I have a degree in French. I do speak Arabic fluently. What I'm requesting from you is an investment in me. So you teach me to get, an, you teach me medicine, you, teach, you give me an MD, and then just the chances of having that degree benefit so many people are so much greater because I do speak three languages more or less fluently. And if you put together the number of people in the world who speak those languages, English, Arabic, and French, that's massive. So from that perspective, I'm, I'm buying a seat in, in, the, in the medical school. Uh, <laughs> and it's really very cheap because I have to say, when you're in seventh grade, you're, I mean, there's not much you're doing. At least in, in Gaza, there was just nothing. School and playing and TV. So just another class in uh, 10 years ago, another class per day makes me uh, a much more um, attractive candidate for medical school. I think it's, it's a very, very good investment. And you guys are in college. It's again, it's not the same thing. You're paying the tuition anyway. Think, and here in Madison, between 12 and 18 credits, the more credits you take, you don't have to pay for it. So from a financial perspective even, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a major issue. So think of it if for the ones of you who like to think in terms of economics and investment, it's really a very, uh, very good investment to take. Uh, I, I want to I talk also about the, the process of application in terms of just details, forget about languages, etc. What I'm trying to say is that learning foreign languages, knowing about other cultures, traveling, uh, will tell the, 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 what do you call it, the um, committee that you apply to, which they have thousands of applicants. I mean, admission rates vary per school between 2%, 2% to 10%, okay? So you have a room of 100 people, and they're gonna take two or 10, that's not a lot. So there's, it's really, really, really difficult to, to stand out. And guess what? A lot of those people have really good GPAs and MCAT scores and recommendation letters. So uh, foreign languages in a sense are, or international experiences are in a sense just one area where you could distinguish yourself for the application process. And it comes up at every single point. It comes up when you're writing your uh, there's a primary application, and then there's a secondary application, and then there's interviews, etc. So the primary application is more like screening. You just put your stats in, and you write the essay. And if they like you, they invite you to write a, second a secondary application, and that has more detail. But at every single point in it, they, will, they ask you what foreign languages you speak without you even mentioning any, anything about that in the essay. They ask you if you've lived in other countries, if you've traveled abroad, they ask you what you did the summer before, 
uh, or you know, the summer, yeah, actually the summer after high school, which you're thinking, okay, I just graduated from high school, that was four years ago, uh, they care about that. So the, the, I, I think at the, at the time that you graduate from high school, your experience is really, uh, and the way you use your time really matter. And, and it's reflected in even the primary application and then later in the secondary application and in the, in, in the interviews. I, I personally, I apply to a lot of schools. One of them uh, is here, obviously. And I did get an interview here. I went. And you'd be surprised uh, you know, if you just Google medical school interview tips, you just have a lot of things. Don't say this, don't say that, say this. You gotta learn about the healthcare reform and the, et cetera, et cetera. My interview was all about how I came here. <laughs> That's what the person asked me. That's what the professor asked me, how, uh, how you learn English about your, they asked me about my family, my siblings, stuff like this. And it's not because they, you know, I lucked out or anything. Is that for them, perhaps, that was a very important thing. I mean, the medical school interview is really important. They, they want to get to know you as a person. And if everything, literally, <laughs> they asked me about my research, I think it's just one or two sentences. Because they could see that in the paper. They could see what you published. They could see where you worked. They could see your, the recommendation letter from your uh, boss, from your advisor. But the whole interview, they were just asking me about what, was, what it was like growing up in Gaza, in Palestine coming to the US, what I intend to do after I graduate. Do I wish to go back to do some work there or some work in the Middle East, et cetera, et cetera. They asked me about how I, I uh, when I was an undergrad here, I started an Arabic language organization. They asked me about that in the interview. Uh, how many people used to come? What was the purpose of it? You know, why did you even do that? So <laughs> just from a very simple perspective, if Having experiences like that makes your medical school interview go that smoothly. It's, I think it's really uh, it's, it's, it's a good privilege. And I, if, you, if you travel to another country, if you lived in another country, if you speak Spanish or French or Arabic or Hebrew or whatever, there's a lot of languages that are offered here. And someone asks you to speak about those, I think you're going to speak very comfortably, right? And if that's your medical school interview, I think that's... Uh, that really makes a huge difference. Uh, there's, there's, there's a part here about just the application process, and I spoke a lot about languages and how that's important, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I wanna give you guys just a very brief, uh, uh, what do you call it, just list of recommendations that I would say about applying. Uh, like I said, just about a year ago, I was in this process. It's very long, and uh, what I'm going to say is doesn't necessarily have to do with languages, but it's just tips that I would. Uh, how many people are applying this year, or it's almost over the application time for this year? Like sophomores, most of you are sophomores. Okay, juniors, freshmen. Okay. Oh, okay. So the juniors at the end of this year, right? You take your MCAT. Uh, the recommendation letters. So how many of you have gotten the ones that are planning to apply next year? If I could just ask, how many of you have gotten your recommendation letters almost ready or they, they have the idea in their head who they're going to have write the letter for them? Yeah. So you got to start early. That's the one very, very important thing that I would say. And have as many letters as you can. Um, Thing they want you to have it depends on the school again it's just not it's not very concrete either two to three letters sometimes four and they do ask in some schools that you have a letter from a non-science professor and a letter from a science professor sometimes they're just vague it doesn't matter uh, the single most important thing about a recommendation letter i would say is just that it shows in the letter that the professor or whoever is writing the letter for you actually knows you like spoke to you more than once or twice, and that one time you raised your hand to answer a question, or the one time they called on you. If that's, how, if that's the, ex, uh, the extent of knowledge or personal interaction that you have with the professor or the person who's writing the letter, don't have them write a letter for you. It just, it's not going to be good. No matter what they say, no matter what impression they have of you, they have to be able to um, 
speak specifically about your personal maturity, about your intelligence, about your aspirations, about your level of uh, politeness, uh, enthusiasm, etc., etc. So I know this is a big school, and there were classes where you have 300 people in, uh, in the classroom, so it's really hard to get to know professors, but try to put it in your mind that, okay, next semester I'm trying to at least take a seminar or two, maybe, and try to get, tell the professor even at the beginning, look, I'm interested in applying to medical school, and I, I, I'm thinking about having you perhaps write a recommendation letter for me, so they keep an eye on you during the semester, and the more interactions you have with them, both, okay, yeah, both in, uh, in terms of academics and otherwise, are really important. I, I, would, I would say that that's the most important thing. It's just because there's so many people, there's thousands of people who are gonna be applying and all of them are required to have letters. You want your letter to have something substantial. Uh, <coughs> Life as a medical student, uh, I would say it's actually easier than undergrad because, but you know, it's just the first semester. Uh, I used, when I was here, I used to take uh, French, in, uh, what do you call it, French uh, neuroscience classes, just random science classes that I like, and then some history classes, Hebrew, Spanish, whatever, that's all here. And then I used to work at the hospital, and I'm always late, so it was really just hard, just getting around to go to your classes. Whereas in med school, it's just all your classes are in one place, and then I have the schedule on my phone, I could check every single day what I have tomorrow. That, for me, just having that organization is really very, uh, very, very helpful. I, it's just hard for me to be organized, right? So uh, life as a medical student is really what, what you make of it. I personally study three hours a day. This is not much, okay? So I, I'm saying this, I'm afraid, but I think I will pass this semester. <laughs> Yeah. So at Madison, the first year is actually just pass-fail. You have to get about 80% to pass. You have five classes, human biochemistry. It's really, really in-depth. And uh, cell structure and function. And then there's a class called uh, Patient, Doctor, and Society, PDS. And you have um, human genetics. And then there's epidemiology. There's a lot of classes. They're mostly hard. And there's five classes. We have about three or four hours of classes every day. And that's, you know, that's a lot. I mean, I remember in undergrad, I used to have a class or two per day, and I didn't used to go very often. <laughs> so just you get up from 8, 8 in the morning, or 7 in the morning, you get breakfast, etc., whatever. And then you go to school. It's 9, right? You have your classes. You're done at 12, okay? If you're not tired, well, usually I am tired. I don't know about you guys, but... If I have classes from 8 to 12 or to 1, I'm really tired, and I get lunch, and I just want to rest. But guess what? You, you don't have time to rest then because you actually have to study all the stuff you learned about today and prepare for the day after. So um, there's another classmate of mine, and I'm sure she, her experience might be different, and perhaps you guys could ask her about it. So what I'm trying to say is that it's just get yourself in there. It's going to be OK. It's not as terrible. Uh, you know, you learn stuff, sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's not, but it's your life, and, and, and I think if you really, really want to become a physician, first of all, you'll get in. Second, it won't be as terrible. It just, if that's something that you really want to do, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll deal with it, I think, it's, it's okay. Plans for the future, uh, in four years, or you know, three years and a half, I'll be done. Hopefully, I'll get a residency that I like. And what I want to do in terms of my thinking is have really good training and research in neuroscience, hopefully, and then uh, also good training in surgery. And I could work. Uh, just the idea is that with the languages, with the training, I'll have so many options. You know, just essentially all of South America, North America, Europe, Africa, Middle East. Or, you know, you could even go to Japan or China. I don't know anything about the languages there. But uh, there's a lot of collaboration that happens between American universities and Japanese and Chinese universities. So just think of the opportunities. Personally, I'm, I'm going to, um, my plans at the moment are to do, say, eight months a year in the U.S. 
and then go, go do a couple of months, four, four months, work in the Middle East, and just come back and forth.